Hello everybody and welcome to the G Kaiser Age. My name is Lucian G Kaiser and today we are going to be checking out the Macross VF2 SS High Metal R Valkyrie figure from Bandai Tamashi Nations. This is the next custom version and we're going to be taking a quick look at the differences between it and the original Sylvie Gina version and all the awesome quality that is in this perfect rendition of the VF2 SS from Macross 2 Lovers Again. So let's get started. Lucian G. Kaiser and the G. Kaiser Age launching. Okay, so here we have the newest high metal R figure to be released. The VF2 SS Valkyrie 2 from Macross 2 R Lovers Again. This is the next Gilbert version. And I absolutely love this nice blue trim on here. I love the red trim on the Sylvie Gina version, but I do love the blue a little bit more. It's a nice light blue as you can see and this figure is basically the same mold as the Sylvie Gina with a few extra parts that we're going to be going over next I purchased this on uh, the website of Ami Ami you can also find it on Hobby Link Japan and a few other select websites out there so if you want to pick one up I do believe there are still a few left available but I do recommend grabbing one as soon as possible because they do sell out pretty quickly and it takes a while um, if any get reissued or released again but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it so we're gonna start with the head here it's the same mold and everything as the Sylvie Gina so the head of course has the same range of flexibility it can move down that much it can move up that much it can of course rotate 360 quite easily you have a nice range of motion that had antenna antennas which are also anti-aircraft lasers can be repositioned so you can reposition those in different ways tilt them forward as if it's firing them and then you can tilt them back into the classic resting position it does come with an extra pair of these so if you happen to damage one or both of them you have a full extra pair and I appreciate that from Bandai they're very nice of them the arm of course has the same range of motion a nice double bend at the elbow there upper arm swivel there's a little it's really stiff when you first get it so it's kind of hard to swivel it a little bit but you got the mid arm at the elbow swivel there and then you got another one via the arm connector to the forearm so you get double swivel on that so plenty of range of motion the arm can flex outwards you just have to move this piece piece of armor out of the way and then you can flex the arm further up and the joints on this are really stiff I have been playing with it and transforming it but the joints are still really stiff and I have to appreciate that difference between this one and the Sylvie Gina because my Sylvie Gina out of the box was also a little bit uh, looser than this one so I appreciate that and of course full 360 on the arms as well so you got that you can bend out that far because it's on a hinge bend forward that far so you can get a nice gripping pose if you want so a nice range of motion there on the legs we've got a nice hip connector now with the wings they do kind of get in the way but you can swing the leg back that far you can bend at the knee, you can of course bend it a little bit further forward, but that's for the jerwalk mode. And then the feet, as you can see here, there's a limited range of motion on them. You don't really get so much of a side to side swivel on the feet, unfortunately, but you do get a nice bend. On the foot, 
and then of course you get the angle from the ankle so even though they don't bend it still stands very well without that at the ankle bend and pivot and you with the pivot of the legs you can get in some really dynamic and nice poses with it so not too much trouble there on that part and of course you got a nice forward swing too and let's go ahead and take a look at the back so of course we got the backpack here with the main thruster and extra units now the wings that I have on here are what are called the uh, anime style wings and basically they're shorter than the actual wings that come with the figure which are these longer ones but you swap these out because then it allows you a little more range of motion with the legs without these wings being in the way but you can always still transform it with that so let's take a look at one of the newest accessories that it comes with and that is the heavy rail gun now I know it looks more like a shotgun, but it is actually a railgun. Now in this show he does grip it kind of like a shotgun and it fires high velocity heavy rail rounds that are designed for extreme penetration. In this uh, incarnation of the Macross universe, they use rail guns instead of the usual chain guns or gatling guns that were on the old gun pods from the original series because of the better penetration rate of the railgun rounds and and the ability to tear through enemy armor and hit vital components versus having to spray several rounds of the chain guns so this is the lighter railgun and this one is the heavy railgun and then we'll discuss some of the other weapons that are actually on it because this figure comes with the super arm pack or SAP as they like to call it and this is what they use this fighter was primarily designed for space combat and so it is really never really seen without using the SAP unit because of the fact that they figured out that it's better to send Valkyries into battle with a full arm super pack like this versus just sending them out there with standard equipment and nothing else. So we're going to take a look at that next. So let's go ahead and throw this on the figure. Now as you can see, instead of like with some Macross figures, the ports that actually plug in for the super arm pack are actually filled in with these little parts. So you just pop them off and that leaves the hole open and then you grab the armor piece that you want now the good thing is they do label them with an L or an R on the inside of the armor piece so you know which leg it's gonna go on and they just easily slide right on and they stay on there nice and tight and as you can see I've got the missile doors open I love that about this figure is that the, all the missile doors do open with the exception of one this one is actually a fixed closed one so you actually have to part swap it so you when you want it open you insert this particular part and then when you want it closed you go ahead and grab the other part and they all come labeled so of course you get that nice label in there it's hard to see on this sorry <laughs> But there's an L or an R on it, so you way you know which leg it's for. And then you just slide it back on there. Now the other cool part is this part, this unit comes with two right leg units. The right one with the missile pods, and then the right one with an actual storage for the heavy rail gun. So we're gonna put the one with the storage for the heavy rail gun on since that's a new part. And I really love the fact that they included the missile part so you don't miss out on having that. And it's one of the reasons why you might be preferred to get this figure versus the Sylvie Gina. Because Sylvie Gina does not come with the heavy railgun and it does not even come with an optional part to store the heavy railgun like this one does. So uh, if unless you like the Sylvie Gina colors, I would recommend getting the next because you get a little bit more bang for your buck. 
But now that we've got that on, you would just take the heavy rail gun and then fold up, fold up again. Make sure it's clicked together. And then you see this slot right here on the side. This slips right in there. And then now it's holstered on his leg. And that's how he can carry it while he's in fighter mode or in jerwalk mode too. And it can be easily accessed in both jerwalk and of course batroid mode. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put on the rest of the super armed pack. So we're gonna go to the arms. Now with the arms, to get the super armed pack on them, and of course, you take the hand off real quick if you want. Don't necessarily have to, but it makes things a little bit easier. And you just open this up. Inside, there's this little piece right there. You push it to expose the panel opening. Might have to push it a little bit more. They're a little hard to come out, but that's a good thing because then you don't end up having them pop off at random parts. Go ahead and put his hand back on, and then you close the arm back up. And then you grab the piece. So this is for the right arm. So that's going to be this one. And you just attach it right on there. And as you can see, once again, all the missile ports open and you can close those up and it looks fantastic stays on there nice and tight and now we're going to go ahead and do the other arm but this time we're going to take the rifle off of this one too fold it up right that and just put that to the side for right now because we're going to have a, a special thing for it. Our, actually if you want like in the fighter mode, you can actually attach it right there. They included that for attachments. So you can attach it to the back. Now you can only do this when the armor is not on the fighter and it's not in uh, fighter mode. But when it's in fighter mode, the alternative storage is actually this. So on the other arm piece, and you can do this, you can switch this part with any of the other two pieces, there's a little panel you can pull off and then you can put this part on to replicate the gun being stored in the forearm missile armor pack. And then you just attach it to the arm that you decide to do that for. So let's go ahead and pop this out again. This time make sure we push it all the way out. There we go. Close it. And we're gonna go ahead and throw this guy right on here. Wrong way. There we go. And perfect. And now he's got both guns stored on here. Gonna close up those missile ports. So now he's got the light rail gun here and he's got the heavy rail gun here. And now the last part of the armor is, of course, the big old backpack. Now, as you can see, I've got the heavy missiles. These are large, long range missiles that are mounted in six points. And these are used to engage targets at long range. So we're gonna keep these folded up. And then you can see here, the wings not only are rotatable at this point, but the outliers with the missiles are also rotatable. So you can rotate all of that. Just like with the Sylvie Gina version, it has all these same options. Now, if you don't want the missiles out and in launch position, you would just simply pull these off and replace them with the closed versions. So just push those right in. And there we go. We've got the closed version. So let's go ahead and do that for the other ones. And all right, now we've got all the missile ports closed. So let's go ahead and get this mounted on the figure. So we come to the back. Now you see these two thruster pods, they are going to slip into these two locations here on the backpack. So let's go ahead and get started with that.
and it is a very tight fit which is good as always the last thing that you want is your figure to not have its parts fitting tightly and I have to say compared to the Sylvie Gina this actually fits on here a lot tighter and a lot better so they definitely did a little retooling between releases to kind of improve things but there we go now we have the VF2 SS in its super armed pack mode and as you can see that large scale rail cannon is pretty long now one of the things that you can do with this too since obviously you couldn't fire the rail cannon from that position is it actually can assume what's a, basically a macross cannon style thick configuration now to do this i'm going to take the backpack back off just temporarily because it's easier to do it with the backpack off so it's going to pull it off like i said it fits nice and tight i appreciate that just got to be careful here there we go all right so take the backpack off there is a connector right here so about to so there is a there is a connector right in here. You simply pull this and then slide this up. And then what you want to do is put the backpack back on the figure. Sliding it into place. Lock that in. And then this part bends down and there is a visor right here that you simply extend out. You pull this forward, moving the head back a little bit. Then the visor covers the forehead, moving the lasers down. That way they don't get damaged. Or you can of course maneuver them backwards and slide this part back into place and lock it in and there you have the heavy or the large scale high velocity rail cannon in its firing mode and i absolutely love it it looks fantastic looks like straight out of the anime And honestly, when I first watched the anime of Macross 2, I thought these were like beam weapons, but no, they are actually just high velocity rail guns. So definitely an awesome figure and I absolutely love it. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the Jerwalk and fire mo fighter modes. Um, for those modes, it's not really too much different. It's pretty much the same as this. All right, so here we have the Guardian mode, or Jerwalk mode as they like to call it in the original anime. I kind of like Guardian mode myself, but let's go ahead and move on. So as you can see, everything is still accessible in this mode. The missile turrets, of course, all the other cluster missile pods, the heavy railgun mounting, and of course, the light railgun mounting there. The figure is very poseable in this mode as well. You can still pose the arms. They still have a great range of motion. And you know, as you can see, we got the cockpit with the figure. Now, here's a disappointing part. The figure is not colored in Nexus colors. It's just a plain white. So I'm going to get in there with some paint at one point or another and go ahead and paint this guy up and give him a nice little blue streak on there, something that matches the figure. But uh, I'll be doing that later. But as you can see, everything is nice and solid. It stands pretty well. I've put the regular wings on here because I plan on showing off the fighter mode next. Now, of course, the regular wings are never folded out in the fighter mode or jerwalk mode when it has the super armed pack. But I'll be showing you the figure without the super armed pack on in its fighter mode. The jerwalk mode, it's essentially the same thing, just 
without the armor on it so there's no reason to really spend a lot of time uh, showing that off without the armor pack if you want to see images of that though I'll have those uploaded on my imager account but all in all it is solid very sturdy and stable as you can see here in the jerk walk mode so let's go ahead and move on to the final mode the fighter mode and then we're going to compare this guy to the previous release here the sylvie gina version so let's get down to the last part and then we're going to do our comparison and make sure we notate some of the notable big changes between the two figures all right so now we have the fighter mode and i absolutely love it this is probably one of my favorite macross valkyrie fighter designs out of all the different macross series now unfortunately this was this particular series macross 2 lovers again did not do so well and it's kind of sad really that it's not canon really because this figure and the anime series itself were not that bad. I love this Macross Valkyrie design. It was not a great series when you compare it to things like Macross Plus or Macross Frontier or the original Super Dimensional Fortress Macross, but it was still a fun watch and I still like to watch it every now and then, but the, fig the fighter mode is very solid. It's actually a lot more solid than my Sylvie Gina one because the legs on my Sylvie Gina tend to kind of slide out of position they seem to have made a much firmer and much more sturdy design with this one so versus the original Sylvie Gina out of the box this figure is basically a lot better and I expect it to stay a lot tighter than the Sylvie Gina version too now of course it comes with the standard high metal R fixed landing gear that you actually have to install on the fighter there we go pull that up a bit pop that out and then you just put in the landing gear in its place so once you have the landing gear popped in on the front there are these panels on the fronts of the legs all right so once you have of course the rear doors off you have these pieces right here and each one is, of course, once again, labeled for the appropriate side of the figure. So let's go ahead and get these put on. So we've got the right side here. It's going to go on the right leg area. Push that in. One for the left leg area. that in and there you go and then you've got landing gear and you can have your figure in its landed mood though these are usually launched by through uh, special launch racks off of the ships that they're that they're using as their carriers but as you can see a fantastic looking fighter mode and I absolutely love it very functional, very detailed. All right, so let's move on to the last part and that's gonna be just a quick comparison between the two figures and then a final overall review and feelings for this particular figure itself. All right, so before I get to the final review and everything, I should note that this unit also comes with, once again, the small remote bit units that are mounted with, uh, with laser cannons, much like the head lasers on the Valkyrie itself, that can be used to intercept incoming enemy missiles or to take a hit for the Valkyrie it's, instead of the Valkyrie taking the direct hit from an enemy attack. So, of course, it comes with four of these guys, and they do come with mounting points on the bottom, so you can mount them on a Tamashii Nations Act 5 stand, so that way you can uh, show them off around the fighter mode. But, uh, as you can see, I've got both my VF-2SS um, 
next version and the Sylvie Gina versions here, right next to each other. Now the biggest difference that I noticed between the two, of course, is the tighter joints, the better, um, of course, fitting parts on the figure itself versus the Sylvie one. And one of the biggest changes was with the Sylvie one, during the transformation for locking the head down, there is this little nub right here. That nub is supposed to fit in to this little groove here, but it's too short to do that. It misses the mark just a little bit. On the next version, they fix that. And as you can see, it has a much longer tab that slides in there to lock the head better into place. So it stays in place. So there's minor tweaks and changes like that on the figure, but it still doesn't detract from the fact that both of these figures are fantastic. But I definitely have to recommend, if you're gonna get one of the two, definitely pick up the, Gil the next Gilbert version because his comes with all the accessories that Sylvie's does, but you get the heavy rail gun and you get the alternate leg piece to mount it and it's just a better tighter figure overall still both of them i highly recommend if you've ever watched macross 2 and you enjoyed it you will enjoy having these figures as a pair and i definitely look forward to more high metal r valkyries from bandai i have become addicted to this line they are fantastic, the detail is great, and the size is actually not that bad. They are a very good size figure. You can definitely get a good play and feel with these figures, and they're very solid. They're sturdy, and they are very poseable, and the transformation is a joy. The transformations on these are so much fun. I actually look forward to transforming it again. Unlike a certain other Valkyrie figure. Oh, I hate transforming this thing. I hate it so much. Ah, anyway, um, yeah, back to the VF2 SS. Yes, these are great figures. Definitely pick them up if you can. Like I said again in the previous video, Ami Ami, Hobby Link Japan, several other Japanese import websites have them available still, especially the next one but I definitely recommend grabbing it quickly because the Sylvie Gina one sold out real fast. And I'm sure next is the next on the line to actually be sold out. But once again, I want to thank you here for joining me here in the G Kaiser age. If you guys like what you see here, definitely drop me a like, a favorite, and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below if you have this figure already and if you've noticed anything with yours. Like I said, mine, very tight, very solid, very few issues, if anything. And those were really minor nitpicks with just some posability issues in the Guardian mode. But honestly, I didn't even bring it up because uh, it was more of myself not setting the legs right than anything else. But yes definitely drop us a like a favorite comment subscribe check out my facebook my twitch my twitter page and my imager account to see more images of this and my sylvie gina valkyrie once again thank you for joining me here in the g kaiser age this is lucian g kaiser signing out until the next macross battle